Four massive dry docks at America's most critical naval facilities suddenly went dark in early 2023. Not from enemy attack, not from budget cuts. From something far more unexpected, the ground beneath them was no longer safe. These closures sent shockwaves through the Pentagon because they revealed a truth the Navy had been wrestling with in silence. America's aircraft carrier empire depends on a network of aging dry docks that are stretched to their absolute limits. At this very moment, two of America's 11 aircraft carriers, the USS Ronald Reagan and USS John C. Stennis, sit completely out of action, undergoing repairs that should have taken four years, but are now stretching towards six or seven. The Stennis has been stuck at Newport News shipbuilding since May 2021 and won't emerge until late 2027. That's a carrier worth $13 billion sitting idle while global tensions rise. But here's what makes this story truly shocking. America has only 18 dry docks capable of maintaining its nuclear-powered fleet, and now four of them are permanently closed. Even more incredible, only one of these remaining dry docks can handle the Navy's newest Ford-class carriers. This means the most advanced aircraft carriers ever built are essentially trapped on one coast when they need major repairs. Today, we're pulling back the curtain on America's most guarded naval secret, the dry dock network that keeps the world's most powerful fleet operational. What you're about to discover will change how you see American naval power forever. Section 1. The Foundation of American Sea Power If you're proud of America's naval dominance, type PROUD in the comments below. To understand why these dry dock secrets matter so much, we need to grasp just how massive modern aircraft carriers really are. The USS Gerald R. Ford stretches 1,106 feet, longer than the Empire State Building is tall. It weighs 100,000 tons when fully loaded. When something this enormous needs repairs to its hull, propellers, or the complex machinery below the waterline, there's only one solution, completely drain the water around it. That's where dry docks come in. These are essentially massive concrete basins that can be flooded to float a ship in, then drained to leave the vessel sitting on blocks for repairs. Building one capable of handling an aircraft carrier is like constructing an underwater skyscraper in reverse. The United States operates exactly four public shipyards capable of nuclear work. Puget Sound and Pearl Harbor on the west coast, Norfolk and Portsmouth on the east. Between them, these facilities had 18 dry docks until the shocking closures of 2023. But here's the kicker. Not all dry docks are created equal. Most were built decades ago when carriers were smaller. The newer Ford-class carriers, with their advanced systems and different power requirements, can only be serviced by specially upgraded facilities. This has created a bottleneck that military planners never saw coming. The numbers tell the story. 36% of America's attack submarine fleet is currently waiting for maintenance. With the dry dock closures, that percentage is climbing. Each day a carrier sits in maintenance is a day it's not projecting American power somewhere in the world's oceans. Section 2. Newport News, America's Carrier Factory. Deep in Virginia, on the banks of the James River, sits what might be America's most important industrial facility. Newport News Shipbuilding isn't just building ships, it's building floating cities that serve as the backbone of American military might worldwide. This facility holds a monopoly that would make any business owner jealous. It's the only shipyard in America capable of designing, building, and refueling nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. Every single carrier in the U.S. fleet was born here, from the mighty Nimitz class to the cutting-edge Ford class. Right now, Newport News is attempting something that's never been done before in American shipbuilding history. In November 2024, they successfully moved the USS Enterprise, not the famous one from Star Trek, but CVN-80, the third Ford-class carrier, within their massive dry dock. This wasn't just any move. They floated the ship's mid-body section using over 100 million gallons of water, then repositioned it to make room for its sister ship, the USS Doris Miller. Starting in early 2025, Newport News began building two aircraft carriers simultaneously in the same dry dock. 
Think about that for a moment. Two nuclear-powered supercarriers, each costing over $13 billion, being assembled side by side. It's like building two small cities at the same time. The man overseeing this incredible feat is Les Smith, Newport News Vice President for the Enterprise and Doris Miller Programs. He told reporters this represents the most work the shipyard has seen in 40 years. 20 aircraft carriers and submarines are currently under construction or repair at the facility, with 25,000 skilled workers spread across 550 acres. But even this industrial marvel has limits. The shipyard is so packed that they're farming out work to other facilities. Fairlead, a private shipyard in Hampton Roads, is now handling overflow carrier work, something that would have been unthinkable just a few years ago. The pressure on Newport News is immense. They're building the future USS Enterprise and USS Doris Miller under a two-ship strategy. Design once, build twice. At the same time, they're conducting complex overhauls on older carriers like the USS George Washington and USS John C. Stennis, all while training the next generation of nuclear shipbuilders. Section 3, the West Coast Crisis. In January 2023, the Navy made a decision that sent ripples through the Pentagon. After conducting seismic assessments at Puget Sound Naval Shipyard in Washington State, they determined that three submarine dry docks and one at the nearby Trident facility posed unacceptable earthquake risks. The closures might seem routine, but they created a crisis in disguise. Dry Dock 6 at Puget Sound was the only facility on the entire West Coast certified to handle nuclear aircraft carriers. With its closure, any carrier needing major repairs on the Pacific side of America now faces a journey of thousands of miles to reach help. This couldn't have come at a worse time. The USS Ronald Reagan, which spent nine years stationed in Japan as America's forward deployed carrier, returned to the United States in 2024 and immediately entered what was supposed to be a 17-month maintenance period at Puget Sound. The Reagan had been America's primary deterrent against Chinese naval expansion in the Pacific, and now it sits in dry dock while tensions continue to rise. The Reagan's maintenance involves everything from hull preservation to upgrading combat systems, replacing aircraft elevator doors, and installing new countermeasure systems. Project Superintendent Brian Fazio called it one of the last preservation periods for Nimitz, meaning this 2003 vintage carrier is being prepared for its final years of service. But here's where the dry dock shortage becomes critical. The USS Nimitz itself is also home ported at Naval Base Kitsap, sharing the same limited facilities as the Reagan. The Nimitz is currently on what officials expect to be its final deployment before retirement. When it returns, it too will need extensive maintenance using the same constrained facilities. The Navy's solution reveals just how desperate the situation has become. They're spending $300 million to completely overhaul the electrical systems at Naval Base Kitsap to accommodate Ford-class carriers. The USS John F. Kennedy, scheduled for delivery in 2025, will eventually be stationed there, but only after these massive upgrades are complete. This means America's newest, most advanced aircraft carrier will spend years on the East Coast, far from the Pacific Theater where it's most likely to be needed, simply because the West Coast lacks proper facilities. Section 4. The $21 billion Solution Recognizing the crisis brewing in America's shipyards, the Navy launched the most ambitious infrastructure project in naval history, the Shipyard Infrastructure Optimization Program, known as PSYOP. This $21 billion, 20-year effort aims to completely modernize America's four public shipyards. But PSYOP has become a case study in how challenging infrastructure projects can become. At Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard, initial estimates of $6.1 billion in 2018 exploded to $16 billion by 2022. At Portsmouth Naval Shipyard in Maine, a single dry dock project jumped from $528 million to $2.2 billion between 2019 and 2021. These aren't just cost overruns, they represent the staggering complexity of modernizing facilities that house nuclear-powered vessels. Every upgrade must meet the highest safety standards while keeping the shipyard operational. It's like performing heart surgery on a patient who needs to keep running marathons. The Navy awarded ACOM Technical Services a $91 million contract in 2022, 
just to prepare Norfolk Naval Shipyard's berths and dry docks for Ford-class carriers. This single contract represents the kind of detailed, expensive work happening at all four facilities. At Portsmouth, the Navy tapped Bollinger Shipyards to refurbish two Virginia-class submarine dry docks, while another contractor works to expand and reconfigure an entire dry dock complex. Each project requires years of planning, specialized equipment, and workers trained in nuclear protocols. The scope of PSYOP goes beyond just fixing dry docks. The program involves re-engineering facilities, reconfiguring layouts to improve efficiency, and replacing capital equipment like massive cranes. Much of the Navy's current equipment was assessed in 2018 as beyond effective service life, obsolete, unsupported by original equipment manufacturers, and at operational risk. Here's the truly sobering part. Even with this massive investment, the Navy admits it won't be able to support almost a third of planned maintenance periods for aircraft carriers and submarines through 2040 without these improvements. That means America's naval readiness depends entirely on PSYOP's success. Section 5. The Ford-Class Challenge The Ford-Class carriers represent the most advanced warships ever built, but they've created an unexpected problem for America's dry dock network. These ships don't just look different from their Nimitz-class predecessors, they require completely different support systems. The most obvious difference is power. Ford-class carriers use an electromagnetic aircraft launch system instead of steam catapults. They generate and consume vastly more electricity than older carriers. This means dry docks need upgraded electrical systems, new power distribution networks, and specialized equipment that didn't exist when most facilities were built. Only one of America's 18 dry docks could handle a Ford-class carrier when the USS Gerald R. Ford was delivered in 2017. This created an immediate bottleneck. The Navy has spent years and hundreds of millions of dollars upgrading facilities, but progress has been slower than expected. The USS John F. Kennedy, the second Ford-class carrier, exemplifies both the promise and challenges of this new generation. The ship completed dead load testing of its electromagnetic launch system in early 2024, shooting test sleds off the deck from February through April. This represented a major milestone, but it also highlighted how much specialized testing these complex systems require. Kennedy's delivery has been delayed multiple times as Newport News works to deliver what they call a hole-up round, meaning the carrier arrives ready for full operations including F-35 aircraft operations, rather than needing extensive post-delivery work. This approach should reduce long-term costs, but it's pushed delivery from mid-2024 to sometime in 2025. The third Ford-class carrier, USS Enterprise, faces even greater challenges. Originally scheduled for delivery in March 2028, the ship is now expected in September 2029, an 18-month delay. These delays cascade through the entire fleet, affecting maintenance schedules for older carriers and deployment rotations worldwide. Meanwhile, the fourth Ford-class carrier, USS Doris Miller, represents the Navy's attempt to streamline production. By building two carriers simultaneously at Newport News, they hope to reduce per-ship costs and delivery times. But this approach requires dry dock modifications that cost hundreds of millions of dollars. Section 6. The Strategic Implications the dry dock shortage isn't just a technical problem, it's a strategic vulnerability that affects America's ability to project power globally. Every day a carrier spends in maintenance is a day it can't respond to crises, support allies, or deter adversaries. Consider the current situation. With the Reagan and Stennis out of service, America effectively operates a nine-carrier fleet instead of eleven. The Stennis alone has been unavailable since 2021 and won't return until 2027 at the earliest. That's six years of a $13 billion asset sitting idle during some of the most challenging times for American naval power since World War II. The problem becomes even more acute when you consider maintenance cycles. Under Navy plans, the USS Harry S. Truman will be the next carrier to undergo the same multi-year overhaul currently consuming the Stennis. After Truman, the Reagan and the final Nimitz-class carrier, USS George W. Bush, will follow. Each overhaul takes years and requires the specialized facilities 
that are already overloaded. China's naval expansion makes these delays particularly concerning. While American carriers sit in maintenance, China continues building new vessels and expanding its influence in the South China Sea. The USS George Washington replaced the Reagan in Japan, but that's a temporary solution that doesn't address the underlying capacity problem. The Navy's solution involves a careful balancing act. They're extending the service lives of Nimitz-class carriers from 50 to 55 years, squeezing every possible year of service from these aging giants. They're also accelerating Ford-class construction, despite the technical challenges and cost overruns. But perhaps most importantly, they're fundamentally rethinking how America maintains its fleet. The expansion of work to private shipyards like Fairlead represents a major shift in naval policy. For decades, all nuclear work was confined to government facilities and Newport News. Now economic necessity is forcing innovation in how America supports its nuclear fleet. The $21 billion PSYOP investment represents more than just infrastructure spending. It's a recognition that America's naval dominance depends on unglamorous but critical facilities that most Americans never see. These dry docks, with their massive cranes and specialized equipment, are as important to national security as the carriers themselves. As we've seen today, America's dry dock network faces unprecedented challenges, from aging infrastructure to seismic risks to the demands of new technology. But the response, massive investment, innovative solutions, and the dedication of thousands of skilled workers demonstrates the same spirit that has kept America's Navy dominant for decades. The secrets behind America's aircraft carrier repair and launch capabilities reveal both vulnerabilities and strengths. While the challenges are real, the commitment to maintaining the world's most powerful Navy remains unwavering. These dry docks will continue serving as the hidden foundation of American sea power, ensuring that our carriers remain ready to defend freedom wherever it's threatened. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into America's naval infrastructure. If you found this information valuable, consider subscribing for more insights into the systems that keep America strong. The men and women working in these shipyards deserve our recognition for their crucial role in national defense.